Hey guys, welcome to our channel EDDR. My name is Cindy Niemsi, I work as a data analyst, and today I'll be introducing you to SQL, the language of big data. If you want more of this content, make sure to like and subscribe below. Thank you. And now let's get started. In this intro to SQL part one, I will be going over what SQL is, what you need in order to run SQL scripts and access data, how to query data using SQL, how to create a table in a database using SQL, and finally, adding data into a table using SQL. FYI, people pronounce SQL differently. I usually just call it SQL, but I've heard it pronounced SQL. Let's start with defining SQL. SQL is an acronym for Structured Query Language. And as its name stands for, it is simply a query language used to access and manipulate data in databases. This means contrary to what you might think, SQL is not a programming language. Because we can't perform repetitive tasks like loops, nor can you build control structures that create events based on the logic with it. But it is a very powerful and beautiful language when it comes to talking to data. It's personally one of my favorite computer languages and I can't wait for you to learn why I love it so much. Also, there exist multiple other query languages used for various kinds of data, such as CQL, GPQL, NoSQL, and you can see more of these in the link that I will drop in the comment section below, as well as what kind of data they're used on. Okay, before we dive in deeper into how to use SQL, I want to share a very short story about SQL, how it came about, and the different versions of SQL that exist today. It all started with a very small guy called EF Codd at IBM in the early 70s who proposed using a relational database model to store data in computers. And everyone thought, oh, how brilliant. Let's make it a standard for how data should be stored. And from there on till the end of the 70s, different database system prototypes were built based on this model and it led to systems like Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Sybase, etc. So except for a few a very few syntax differences between these database systems, they all use SQL, such that by the 80s, SQL became the standard query language. Fast forward to today, the giants of relational database management systems are Oracle, MySQL, which is an open source, also owned by Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, and DB2 by IBM. So what do we need to use SQL? In order to use SQL, we'll need access to a relational database system where data has been organized in a tabular form with columns and rows. What I mean by relational database here is a database where data is stored in tables that share a relationship through unique common identifiers. We will also need a database engine to write SQL scripts on so that we can access the data stored in the database. These are basically portals between the end user who needs the data and the database system. Most database systems do provide an engine to query data based on. In this video, I'll be using a cloud-based platform called Mode Analytics to access its local public data. Anyone can create a free personal account which they can use to follow along with this introductory video and have access to the same database that I will be using for the examples. And lastly, we'll obviously need knowledge of SQL to write scripts and do all the fun stuff we want with data. Now, why don't we take a quick look at Mode and see if it meets all of our requirements. So I went ahead and searched for Mode Analytics on Google Click on this link, it takes me on their landing page. You can go ahead and create a personal account. It's free. I already signed up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sign in. Then I'll go ahead and click on this plus sign to create a new report. It takes me to this page, and here to the right, you can see all of the different tables that they have in their public data warehouse. And then if I click on this first table, and I run it, you can see here that the table is organized in a columnar form. So we have our columns and we have a rows. And in this section up here, this is where we're going to write all of the SQL scripts. So it looks like Mode does meet all of the requirements. This is amazing. Now that we've checked, we have everything we need, we can start summoning the data. The equivalent of a key in SQL to get data in your hands is the SELECT statement. I'm telling you this statement is a magical spell in the world of big data and it just gives us access to so many things. You can use this SELECT statement to see everything that's in a table or you can decide you only want to see some columns of the table or a few rows of the table. There's so much more we can do with this one keyword but for now we'll only look at the fundamentals. 
Now, it is very important to remember that just like with spells, you need to always follow the correct syntax and be within constraints or you won't get what you ask for. In SQL, there's a specific format to follow when using the select statement. The syntax to extract the columns in a table is as you see we have here, is a select keyword followed by a list of specified columns you want to see, and then we have the from keyword followed by the table name. So a select statement is always composed of a select keyword followed by everything you want to see, then a from keyword, and finally the table you're pulling from. Now, what if you wanted to see all the data in a table and that table had 100 columns? Can you imagine how annoying it would be if you wanted to see all those columns and had to type all of them out? Well, good news is in SQL, we don't have to. We can simply follow the select keyword with the Y call character star, which in computing substitutes for characters you just don't want to bother typing. Just like this. And that does the trick and saves us from arduous typing. And then as always, we follow with the from keyword and a table name. I have another annoying scenario for you. Say a table has 100 million rows, which would take quite a while to load, but we only really care about the first 100 rows and need them urgently. When that happens, we can just use the limit keyword, which comes after the from keyword in order to limit the number of rows we want to see from the table. As easy as that. Now let's try actually querying some data in mode so you can see how easy it is to do all the things we just went over. So we're going to go to our engine space here, type in a select keyword. And then we're going to list out the columns that we want to look out. I'm just going based off the columns that I see down there so it's easy. And I'm pulling that from the histo that first table that I've clicked on basically. So we have a date, year, month. I think I'll end there. Oops, what am I doing? Ugh, I hate when this thing just suggests things and it's like, I just want to keep typing. <laughs> Don't give me those suggestions. Okay, so we have a from keyword. And then I'm going to add a table name. Okay, now I like the suggestions. So I don't have to type all of that long table name. Nice. Let's run this. Do, 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 do. And here we go. We can see that we can see the only the three columns that I've listed out, even though the table has more than just those columns, but only the three ones that I've listed are there. So now let's try looking at all the columns. So I'm using the wild the wild character star here. It's taking a while. There aren't that many columns. Maybe my computer is just slow. Okay, so now it's pulled back all of the columns that we had seen in the beginning, not just a few. All the columns are there. So this already has a limit to 100 set by mode, but let's see how many rows this table actually has. So I can see here that it has about 3,000, almost 4,000 rows, but let's say I only want to see the first 1,000. So I'm going to use my limit keyword, limit 1,000, and there we go. I only have the 1,000 rows and that took a lot less time than earlier. We've just gone through different ways we can query data from a database using SQL and that was very easy. Isn't this amazing? Okay, now we can go ahead and see how we're going to add a table into a database. Although you might want to be very careful with what you're adding to a database, adding a table into a database is just as easy as querying data. All you need to do is make sure you're following the syntax as always. And the two magic keywords for creating a table are create table. Then we pick a table name and then in parentheses, we list out the columns we want in a table and right next to it, we specify the data type of each of these columns. You'll see what those data types could be in a second. So here's a syntax if you wanted to create a table called customers with a specified column names in parentheses and you can see right next to the column names, I have the data types for my columns. For a list of all the different SQL data types you can use, make sure to check the documentation for the database system you are using by usually simply looking it up online. Mode uses PostgreSQL. And so I just basically went online and typed PostgreSQL data types, and then I found all the data types I had access to. We've created a table that was easy, but it was an empty table. We need to add values in that table. 
The syntax to add values to all the columns in a table starts with the keywords insert into, followed by the table name, then the keyword values, followed by an open bracket. Actually, no, this is an open parenthesis. I always get those two mixed up. I have no idea why. Anywho, so we have we open a parenthesis, and within the parenthesis, we're going to list out all the values that we want to put into our columns. And that's it. We're done. If we wanted to add values to only a few columns of a table instead of all the adding values in all the columns of a table, we would need to specify which columns we are adding the values into before proceeding to then listing those values as you see here. I will show you how to do all of this in mode, but your free account does not let me write or edit into the database, unfortunately. But trust me on these, make sure you just always follow the syntax and you've got this. It's easy and straightforward. Okay, so we've covered a few fundamentals in this intro and I think you can confidently say you know how to create and retrieve data using SQL. My goal for you is that by the end of this series, you're able to create, retrieve, update, and delete data using SQL, which covers some very important SQL fundamentals. There's a lot more to do in SQL, but I think this is a good introduction to let you decide how much you want to advance into your SQL education. In the part two of this intro, I'll go over how to identify characteristics of a table, modify data, filter data, delete data, and talk about other things we wouldn't cover, but that you can absolutely do in SQL. I look forward to seeing you guys again. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Bye.